Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is going to contain my reaction to Chapter 20 Part 2 of the main campaign. I'll be sharing my thoughts and impressions on this new campaign update. And besides that, I also want to talk about some recent Dragalia Lost news in this video since it's been about a week since I made a new post and we've gotten a couple updates on an upcoming event as well as our next version update for the game as a whole. So we're going to start off with some of that news and we'll get into the story discussion in the second half of the video just so that if you want to avoid any further spoilers you have an opportunity to walk away. Let's start with a new version update that we'll be releasing this evening. This was announced a while back but is finally rolling out tonight and I think there are two big headlines when it comes to this version update. The first is that we're finally getting a system that was announced a while back whereby we'll be able to use just a few taps and skip tickets in order to complete all of our daily quests in one central location. I think this is really nice and probably a little bit overdue just as there's a lot of weeklies and dailies to complete in Tregalia Lost these days. There's more endgame content to do than ever before which means more weeklies to complete. And even as far as dailies go, we have things in place now like the Draconic Essences, as well as the Trials of the Mighty that you want to be doing on a daily or at least regular basis. So our time is stretched across all these different activities, and I think it'll be nice to have a central place to at least be able to get through the basics like your Avenue to Power, Avenue to Fortune, etc. Pretty cool update in my opinion, certainly a nice little quality of life change. The second big headline as far as the version update goes is that uh, we're getting a treasure trade for certain items, moonlight stones, steel bricks, and others like mana that for a while now we've just been stockpiling and haven't really had a good outlet for. There aren't that many four star weapons to even use steel bricks on with the amount that we get these days and moonlight stones have primarily been used as a way of transforming any additional 4 star dragons you summon into Eldwater by unbinding them and then selling or releasing the unbound copies. Now we're going to be able to trade those for Sunlight Ore, some Damascus Crystals it looks like, and when it comes to the mana it looks like we can actually exchange that for Honey, so pretty cool update as well. Gonna be uh, nice to cash in on some of those items. That's not going to come out until the 27th though, so stay tuned for that make sure that you Look at that because I don't know if that might be on a monthly basis where it refreshes or something of that sort. Didn't appear to be but I may not have looked super closely so that's one I would watch out for. And in any case at the end of the month you also want to make sure by then you've cleared out your Void Battle Treasure Trades, your Astral Raids, and of course nowadays your uh, Battle Royale as well. Anyway that's pretty much it as far as the version update goes. The next thing I want to talk about as far as Dragalia Lost News is that we're having another summer event, a raid event to end this month called the Stranded Scions and this is where we're going to get Summer Yudin introduced but alongside him in the event artwork we can actually see we're getting a Summer Chell and a Summer Leonidas. So this event appears to be all about the royal siblings. When you read the event description it talks about Emil possibly being the villain there. The boss for the event looks to be a reskin of Barbary, and I don't think she's technically gotten a reskin yet. Sila was a little bit similar in the Doomsday Getaway, but I think different enough uh, that she's considered a different boss design, so I think this is our first reskin of Barbary. Overall, looks like an event with cool potential. The royal siblings get stranded after trying to take a beach getaway. What else with the summer event, right? But it sounds like an opportunity for them to bond and maybe we'll get to know them a little bit better as they relate to one another. So I just think that's a pretty good event and unfortunately have like no summoning resources to try go for the associated banner or possibly multiple banners. And now let's get into chapter 20 part 2 because when it comes to banners and story chapters a common connection is that on the banners, on the showcases, Gala Adventures or Gala Dragons will show up who appeared as part of the main campaign and at this point my prediction as far as the Gala Adventure that we're going to get at the end of this month, maybe alongside Summer Chell or Summer Leonidas on the showcase, maybe both of them, is probably Gala Audric based on the latest half of a story chapter. 
So as we get into this Masked Beast fight here, which by the way, pretty cool, even though there's a little bit of load time here, but just pretty cool to fight all the Agito in a row in this chapter. But uh, as we get into that, yes, Audric, he's in the thumbnail. He made an appearance in this chapter. Pretty cool to see that happen as well. I was expecting Aurelius to appear as a messenger to Yudin to tell him whatever message that he wanted him to hear when he was older at the Sacred Tree. But instead he appears in his Audric form, which also makes me wonder if this is just kind of like a, kind of like a Minato style, you know, sealed away part of myself to, to leave you a message, or if it's actually a visitor from another timeline. But uh, this chapter introduced some interesting things. We learned more about Nedric's origin and how he was saved basically as a dead soul, but one with the dragon's blood in the other world and how Bahamut was able to use that as a vessel. Like that was all super interesting. I didn't fully understand all of it. We learned about Zethia's power of prayer a little bit more and like what prayer actually means in the context of Dragalia Lost. It was interesting to get explicit mention of what Sheila is, even though it's been heavily implied so far. Also thought it was interesting that Sheila and Zena were the ones who might be able to dispel that barrier when we already know that the prince also has part of the other's flesh. So it seemed like something that the prince would be able to do too. But all in all, pretty good chapter, a little bit on the short side. Like I just wanted a little bit more that cliffhanger at the end with the person who's pulled Zethia away. I wish we could have seen who that was. But when we read the preview of the next chapter, it looks like Elysium is going to make an appearance, which also might mean that we get to see more of Ilya, maybe Mina in some form or fashion, Mordecai. So I am very excited for the next chapter. I think we're finally reaching the climax of this arc, as I've said several times now. But anyway, y'all, that is going to do it for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed the chapter and are having a good time in Dragalia Lost. Thank you as always for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.